Welcome to today's live stream. I'm super excited to welcome you here today. Before we get started and get into the really for real live, this is obviously a pre recorded video where I can tell you a couple things and then we can get started. So, uh, honestly, what I'm doing is buying myself time to turn the camera on and make sure that everything sounds good. But uh, while we do that, while we wait for myself, let's go ahead and comment below. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Maybe let's start with your name and where you're watching from. And then also I'd love to hear about uh, maybe the latest project you're working on or your favorite software. So if you can post a link below, go ahead and post a link to your portfolio. We'd love to check it out and see what you're up to. And maybe even let us know what your favorite uh, software is or maybe your favorite subject. Do you like web design or print design or making t-shirts or logos or branding? I don't know. Go ahead and comment below and let us know. We'd love to check it out. And then also, if you'd love to see what I'm up to, you can check out my work at DerekMitchell.com. You can see some YouTube videos at YouTube.com slash Derek Mitchell. And then also live streaming at Behance.net slash Mitchell's Garage. So you can check me out there. And then did I say Instagram? I don't know if I said Instagram yet or not. Instagram.com slash D Mitchell Design. So hopefully there's links and buttons and stuff here right there. Uh, anyway, all right, guys, we're about to dive into some really cool stuff. Uh, feel free to comment in the thread. And I'd love to, again, see what you're up to. And I'll try and answer your questions as we get going. But let's go ahead and dive in. Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign, creating real world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more. Check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today. All right, guys, are you ready? Let's do this. <clears throat> What's up, Marche? I see you. All right, let's do this. All right. I'm digging this. This is a good hype track. Let's design some stuff. Let's make some things. All right. So yeah, Marche. Hey, do you go by Shay by chance? So my sister-in-law's name is Shay. Although she spells it different than you do. Glad you're able to get into the graphic design course. <clears throat> so Marche is a vault member. You guys are interested in checking that out. You can go to my website at DerekMitchell.com and uh, a couple ways to get it. You can get the course by itself by buying it here, or you can uh, jump up here to this courses link and uh, scroll down. And uh, right here, you can get the vault access to the vault. <clears throat> so anyway, check that out when you get a minute, if you want. But yeah, so Marche had an issue uh, with the login of some of the courses, so I hooked her up with a link to some of the content I have over on Skillshare. So I'm glad that worked out for you. Sounds good, your audio and video is not in sync. That's a bummer. I feel like Behance hates me lately. It's all right though. <clears throat> all right, we're gonna keep going. How far behind Shay would you say? Do you mind if I call you Shay? Can I call you Shay? I can call you Marche, whatever you want. Uh, would you say that the audio, how far off the audio and video sync? Like half a second, five seconds? Also, I think the feed's probably like 10 seconds behind live or 20. All right. About a second or two. That's still super annoying, isn't it? All right. <clears throat> uh, Facebook or yeah, check out um, YouTube. Whoa, all caps. YouTube. Let's try that one more time. YouTube.com slash Derek Mitchell. We should be live there as well if there, we run into any issues on Behance tonight. Uh, we can check that out and see. Uh, <clears throat> that should be better. Either way, wherever you guys are tuning in from, happy to have you here. Excited to welcome you guys to tonight's stream. Uh, hopefully we don't go more than about 45 minutes to an hour. And what we're doing is we're going to make a PowerPoint presentation. Well, we're not going to make a presentation. I'm making some su supporting. See what I did there? Su 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 supporting graphics. Also, also, so we're working on this third bull brand. Uh-oh. 
It just drops on the keyboard. Okay, I didn't kill the stream. That's good. All right. <clears throat> Marche says the stream is great on Facebook. Is that in the Facebook? Which Facebook group? Is that in the group or is that on my Facebook page? I think we're in a couple places. We're all over the place tonight. So check these out. These new stickers. Here it is in black or red with a black bowl. And here it is in black with a red bowl. We should open these things up. So I just got another box of stickers from Sticker Mule today. Super pumped for these ones. These ones, that's not proper grammar. Oh well. <clears throat> Check this out. Oh, these look so good. Look so good. All right, so Marche is over on the complete graphic design. Uh, awesome, no leg over there. Great, all right, cool. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so we got these stickers. Let's open up the other ones real quick because they look so good. Stick them on stuff. <clears throat> and if you want to see the process for this, how I made these stickers, the restream is live. Um, I'm also noticing on Behance, my older streams aren't there right now. And I know we're doing some new exciting things that are in the works. So I don't know if it's just me or if things are changing on the platform. Uh, but all of the replays for everything I think I've ever done in a live is still up on YouTube as well. If you guys want to check that out. <clears throat> What's up? Is it Santosh on Behance? I see you. What's up, Rob? Um, yeah, super cool. All right, so check it out. Here's here's the red version. Here's the black version. I got them both printed because I couldn't make up my mind. Get my face closer so the camera focuses. These are so cool. I'm so pumped for these. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's get to work. Let's fade the music out a tiny bit. <clears throat> so what we're doing tonight is building that brand. Hey, Rob, uh, the mobile Behance app, is the audio and video synced up on there? All right, let's do this. So what we need to do, the simple fast thing, all, all that we need tonight, like literally the only thing that I really need tonight is one background for this, for a PowerPoint presentation, okay? Uh, but we're gonna be extra about it. We're gonna make a bunch of them and then we'll probably try and put it into a PowerPoint template of some sorts. I don't, I only have like 45 minutes for the stream tonight. Rob says it's perfect. Okay, so Marche, uh, Rob is using the Behance app, not the actual website, and he says it's perfect. So anyway, we'll get it figured out. We're experimenting how to do better live feeds. Incremental improvements, you guys. Hoping to do better every single time with things. All right, so let's jump into this. So right now I've got PowerPoint open. And in the new version, I've got this welcome to PowerPoint, take a tour, which I could probably benefit from because I've been using Keynote a lot lately. I haven't used PowerPoint in a long time. Uh, the other thing I noticed right away is that, <clears throat> uh, one, that I need to drink more water, apparently. Uh, but two is that this looks more landscape, more than 16 by nine. So let's, the first thing we got to figure out is how big of a size we want to make this. So does anybody watching right now know what a good PowerPoint size is? And I purposely didn't look this up yet because I wanted to show you guys my workflow. So what I would do, if I didn't have you guys to ask questions or if you didn't have me to ask questions, I'd go to the Googs, right? Google.com, actually I would just type it right in the address bar. I wouldn't go to Google and then search. I would just search up here, but whatever. Um, um, PowerPoint slide size. Okay. <clears throat> Wide screen, 16 by nine, which I figured. Um, let's see. This isn't helping. All right, so I'm gonna hit command and click to open this in a new tab. Uh, awesome. So the other night I talked to uh, you guys about, uh, I think it was Rob was asking questions about pricing and it looks like in the comments on Behance, he says he just got his graphic designers guild handbook. It's a beast. It is a beast. First I thought you said it's the best, but then I reread that. It's a beast. It is a, it's a thick, super thick book filled with all kinds of great tips and tricks on how to price your work correctly. Um, graphic design guild handbook. This is what he's talking about right here. This guy, make sure you buy the most current 2021 version. I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's this one. Anyway, check that out for pricing. 
and ethical guidelines on how to be a graphic artist if you're just getting started. Oh, that looks like it's the most recent one. All right, there you go. Check that out when you get a minute. Jumping back over to here. All right, 16 by nine. So basically like, all right, let's just, um, I'm sure there's a way. So I'm, I'm totally out of my element in PowerPoint and I purposely did not research in front of this stream because I wanted you guys to see this as a designer, when you're doing stuff, you're going to get asked by clients. Well, can you make this thing for me real quick? And you gotta be like, yeah, sure. And then as soon as you hang up the phone, you go, crap, how do I make this? <laughs> so uh, that's what we're doing. It's just a simple background. We'll figure it out. I've done this before. It's been a couple years since I've done it in PowerPoint. Uh, again, cause these you work in keynote. So, um, <clears throat> what I would probably do if I was really comfortable, I might just go right into PowerPoint cause it's, it's got plenty of design tools in here that you could just design right in PowerPoint. Uh, but because I'm way more comfortable in Photoshop and illustrator, that's what we're going to jump into for this. So I'm going to jump into Photoshop. I think just because there's some extra things I could do with brushes and textures if I get into it. All right. So let's make a new document file do, and I'm going to go to a web size. Cause that's going to give me this 1920 by 1080 at 72 click. Okay. Or click create. And the, yeah, oh, that was okay. Anyway, this should be the right size. So what I'm going to do right away, uh, just to kind of accelerate this, I'm just going to grab any random color. It does not matter. I'm just going to fill my layer. I'm going to save this. Let's just right click quick export as PNG. I'm going to call this, I don't know, 1920 by 1080 size test does not matter. <clears throat> Let's go over to the brand live streams. Nope. Let's throw this actually. Let's throw this in here. Herbal presentations, new folder, um, templates, create. All right. <clears throat> throw it in there. Okay. Uh, so we made the size, spit it out real quick. Now I'm just going to jump over into PowerPoint. This music is intense. Let's close this one. Let's make a new document in PowerPoint. New presentation. We're just going to make it blank. Going to delete this extra garbage. Actually, you know what I could do? Insert. I see this tab here. Let's insert probably an image or background or something. How about a picture? Picture from file, okay? And then let's jump over to that file we just exported. Derek's files work. And I'm just gonna drag a shortcut for this project over here to my favorites. So I don't have to do this every single time. Presentations. Templates, assets, there's that test, insert it. Boom, it looks like it is the exact correct size, which is great news. Okay, so now I know that I've got this, the size that I want, we can kind of go crazy with it. So let's jump back into Photoshop and all that they asked for was like a simple kind of off-white background with the logo ghosted in the black. <clears throat> but you know I'm gonna be extra about it because that's what I do. So let's start off by getting a nice off-white off white color, which I happen to know is E F E F E F my hashtag or my uh, hex colors down here. Click OK option delete to fill that color. Um, let's name this artboard off white full logo watermark. Okay, now we need to find that watermark. So let's go grab the brand, throw it in here. Scale it up and Bob's your uncle. <laughs> I don't say that. I never say that. I just did say that, but that's not something I say. All right. So I don't want to, if I fade this out as like a watermark, it's going to make this red look like pink and we don't want that. <clears throat> so what we're going to do a couple ways to work. Uh, probably the fastest is to come down here and we are going to click on the FX thing with this new logo selected and we're going to do a color overlay. 
and it happens to be a color that works great. But what I typically would have to do is I would click on my color swatch here in my layer style. Okay. <clears throat> and then, so click on this and then I'd come over here in my wherever, whichever color I'm sampling from. And I'd sample that first. So that way it gets that color over here in my color picker. And then I would just drag it down just a tiny bit just to get a little bit of a darker version of that. Okay. So it's got a little bit of red into it, but it shouldn't. All right, we're gonna start with that. Click okay, click okay. And you'll notice that the circle, now the whole thing has that color overlay effect applied to it. So instead of it being black with red on this little period thing, uh, it's all now one color. All right, great. That's literally all they asked for. Uh, so I'm gonna save this. I should have saved first, but I got going. All right, so let's go back to here. Let's go to the presentations, the templates, new folder. We're gonna call this design files. I'm just gonna stash it in there. And we're gonna call it um, backgrounds, let's save it. All right, how we doing guys? I'm flying, I know I don't have a lot of time. Uh, uh, let's see. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm glad you learned something new. <laughs> uh, Marche. Awesome. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. So we've got this off white full logo watermark. That's looking good. I'm going to hit command J to jump cut a copy of the artboard. I had the whole artboard selected. Okay. <clears throat> now what we're gonna do is start just fleshing out peripheral background things. And we're gonna make like a hundred of these. So let's start out with the full logo. Um, go to libraries. I'm already on the third bull and co. So in libraries, in the creative cloud, you can, you can create a new library, like a new folder. Uh, and the way you do that, pretty straightforward. Here's, you're on the libraries tab. If you don't see that, go to window, down to libraries. There it is. And we're gonna click create new library and then you just name it whatever you want for your client, for yourself, for a project. Could be uh, you know anything you're working on. In my case, I happen to have this brand with the logos down here, the uh, character styles for the fonts, and then the colors. And the way you add those is you just pick anything that you're working on on the canvas. And down here, I can click the little plus button to add it to that folder. So then when I jump into Illustrator, all these assets will be there as well. All right, so let's change this background to red. You know what I should do? Instead of this being a layer, I'm gonna come down here to, I can't see it. This little half circle, half black, half white thing. I'm gonna click solid color. And the reason why I did that, see the difference? It's I had a layer before, this guy right here, with the fill, which is fine. But when you do it this way, watch, when I click on a color, it immediately fills that layer with the color, which is just a little bit faster. Versus if I'm on a layer and I do that, all it's doing now is selecting that color over here in my foreground colors or background color. And then I have to actually go to edit and then actually go down to fill or do the shortcut to fill this layer. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing, guys. So uh, that might be a little bit of a better way to work. <clears throat> so let's jump over here. Sample this color. Fill that one. I'm just gonna do that that way. So when I copy things over, it's all looking good. It's all working well. All right. <clears throat> let's rename our layer. Red, full logo, watermark. Okay, so now we're gonna go a little bit different on this. We're gonna double click on our color overlay effect here on this logo. And instead of it being this cream color, off-white, whatever, we're gonna sample this red background and we're gonna just come over here. So when I sample something, see where it, over here, it has that little white circle. So that's telling me exactly the color it's sampling. So if I come down just a tiny bit, it doesn't have to be much, just a tiny bit. And I click on that. Now it's just a, a little bit darker, super subtle effect, but really classy, okay? Uh, yes, Marche. I just saved those four colors to the library to be my main colors. And the way that I did it, 
Um, I could do this in Photoshop, but the way that I built this brand out, I started in Illustrator. So when I was over in Illustrator making stuff, let's see if I can find that brand. Uh, well, here's here's a cool sample. I'm just gonna open this because I think it's cool looking. This is a surfboard brand I built just for fun. Um, the replay is live, but let's say I'm in my libraries. It's gonna take it a second in Illustrator to open up. <clears throat> I could jump over to the third bowl and I'm in illustrator now, but I still see my same assets. So let's just pretend like, Hey, I wanted to add, you know, this, these colors, I could sample them from down here, but let's just pretend just play along. Just draw a little square here. And let's just say I sampled this. Actually, I'm going to take a huge step back. Apparently my pre-workout energy drink thing is kicking in and we're, we're flying now. Okay, so if I just click on this color, the foreground color over here fills. So I should be able to come over here and click on this little plus in the library. And you can see it behind me if I move. And it gives me the option to add the fill color. So if I click on that, now it added that fill color to my colors. I could also just take this whole asset and just like lob it over here. And now it sinks in there as well. So now if I jump back into Photoshop, that color is immediately available. And if I scroll down, that artwork is available. So now I could take that surfboard and just drop it right in here. Really, really cool stuff. Here we go. Let's make the bowl. I, you see where this is going, right? Yeah. We are officially a surf company now. I love it. Done. That is beautiful. All right. Back to business. So let's say you want to rename it. Just double click down here and you can name your artwork. <clears throat> I can also just highlight it and click the little trash can down here to, to delete it from that if I accidentally add stuff that I shouldn't add. So, okay, cool. Now let's keep going. Let's keep making stuff. I'm gonna come back up here, click on the actual artboard, Command J to jump cut a copy so it brings everything with it. Again, I could also just click and drag holding the option or the Alt key uh, on the title. I'm just gonna drag a copy down that way. Lots of ways to work here. So let's grab this background color. Let's change it to this thing. Let's double click on the color overlay. Sample this art or this artboard. Drag it down just a tiny bit to get the same tone on tone effect going on. That might be a little bit darker so I can drag my opacity down a touch. Now when I do that, that red comes back because this is just a color overlay over the artwork below it. So let's not do that. <clears throat> let's come back up here to blending options. We're gonna blend the opacity instead a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. All right, good, good, good. Let's keep going, let's rename this first. What color is this? I don't know, so what we're gonna do, I have this app called SIP and I love it, S-I-P, SIP. <clears throat> Shout out to Hank's Hatchets in Whitefish, Montana, sponsoring the podcast tonight with a hat. Just kidding, I paid for the hat. But Hank's Hatchets is awesome. It's a real place. I took my dad there for his birthday this last weekend, and we threw axes at wooden targets. And it's the greatest thing ever. And throwing stars. Little Chinese throwing stars. My dad won on everything because he's because. All right. <clears throat> so we got sip open. I'm gonna sample this color. It is bright gray, is the name of this thing. I mean, you can name it whatever you want, but like when you click on a color with SIP, it has all the names of the colors, which is so cool. And look at this. This color is literally called Tax Break. <laughs> I want to know, is that a real color or did SIP make this up? Anyway, all right. <clears throat> I did not learn the colors in my college education art degree. That didn't happen. The color names. All right. Bright gray. So we're going to call this... We're just gonna call it gray, because that doesn't look like bright gray to me. All right. And then one more, Command J, jump cut a copy. Let's make this one this color. Click on my color layer, click on this in the library. That looks kind of cool reversed out. I might leave that. But just because I wanna see what happens if it's darker. I kind of like it reversed out. I'm going to leave it reversed out. All right. Um, 
let's see, what was I even doing? Oh, the color, sip. What color is this? Nero. This color is called Nero. Nero, full logo watermark. Boom. I saw somebody commented, I heard it. Oh no, that was sip. Taking a sample. All right, just checking something real quick, guys. All right. Um, all right, so I've got my main four colors from the brand as options here. Just super subtle watermark. And the idea is that you could put text over the top of it. Okay. So there's that. Um, let's take off the words copy and then the number. Let's clean this up a tiny bit. All right, guys, we're going to try and wrap this up in 20 minutes. You think we can do it? All right, save it. Make sure you save your work. Okay, um, let's see here. So we're going to do the same thing with the alternate version of the logo. So now what we want to do is go grab that alternate version. We're going to slam it over here. Scale it up. Now with this logo, something I mentioned before, it doesn't center well because the artboard sees the little TM over here. So it's trying to center based on what it sees as the whole shape, which is this big. Okay. So what you gotta do, what I have to do is, um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna make a shape doesn't matter. I'm just hit command a or the same as select all to get those marching ants around the whole document. And then with this rectangle selected, now I've got the option in my options bar because I've got the move tool selected to center this thing. Okay. Select deselect or command D. Now I can just physically drag this shape. Okay. So now the shape is going to look centered, even though the whole thing technically isn't centered. Does that make sense? It made sense to me, but okay. Let's drag a copy of this effect. So there's a couple ways we can do this on this effect here below it. We got that color overlay. I can hold on the option key or the alt key, click and drag up to here. And it's going to copy that effect. That's one way to work. Or I can right click on this layer and I can scroll down and go down to where it says copy layer style which copies whatever styles have been applied to it. I'm going to turn this layer off on this new white version here. I'm going to right click, scroll down, and I'm going to go to paste layer style. Boom. Done. Okay. <clears throat> now let's clone. Actually, let's rename this. So this is off white. Um, T3 B logo watermark. All right. Boom. I'm going to hold option, drag to the right, clicking on the title. Let's rename this thing. This one's going to be red. All right. So let's, uh, on my red up here, change the color. Let's click up on the one above it. Right click, scroll down, copy layer style. Right click, scroll down, paste layer style. Boom. All right, this is the gray T3B logo watermark. And the reason why I'm taking the time to rename these is because when I get all done with all of this and I finally export everything, it's going to add those artboard names to the file name. Yeah, so now it's just repetition, exactly. So uh, rinse and repeat, right? Um, we could get creative with it. We could add some more things, but this is the bare bones of like, hey, I need something for the image background. So I'm gonna finish this and then we'll probably do a few more that are a little more creative. Uh, oh, let's finish this thought though. So I gotta bring, 
this, where did we go? Oh, I shouldn't have copied it from that one. It's all right. <clears throat> so see what I did wrong? I should have copied from this left to the right, so everything's there, and then just change the background instead of having to swap out the image. But let me just show you how we can do that. I'm just gonna delete this guy. I'll just delete that layer. Actually, I'm gonna save it because I want that layer style. So I'm gonna copy this. Uh, this layer over here. Sorry, I shouldn't have scrolled. Now I lost my place. Okay, so I got to go from here all the way up to here. So let's grab this guy. Option click, drag, a copy. And because I'm now on this artboard, it knew to center that. So I brought a copy from where this one was down here all the way up to here. Centered it automatically. Let's hold down option and drag this effect down to here and it replaces that one. Now this one, now here's the difference. I just copied the effects, but this one, remember when I double clicked over here and I changed under blending options, this opacity. Well, we can see that right up here under opacity. It's still 43% or at least I, I can see it. If you're watching the stream, this number might be too small to see, which I just realized. Um, so when I just copied the effects, it copied the effects, but it didn't copy the fill opacity, which is now back at 100%. See the difference when I turn that one on and off? This new one is darker. So what we're gonna do now, or what I should have done, is right click on this instead, copy the layer style. So then it copies everything, the opacity, the fill, the blend mode, and any effects applied to it. So now when I right click and paste the layer style, it should be exactly, there we go. Now it pasted the opacity as well. Let's delete this extra. Save your work. Boom. And we're pretty much on the home stretch here as far as the basics. So let's uh, fill this with our dark Nero color. And I think I left this alone, but let's click on it and double check. Right click, copy layer style. Come back down here, right click, copy, uh, paste layer style. And the reason I'm able to click on what I want and it jumps right to it is because I have the move tool selected and up here in the options bar, I've got this little tick mark saying auto select whatever layer I click on. So that way, no matter where I click, it will jump to that layer in the artboard. If that's annoying and you want it to just stay on one layer, just turn that off. And then no matter where you click, it will only be connected to whichever layer you last had selected. Hope that makes sense. All right. <clears throat> Moving right along. Now let's just do a couple more that are a little creative. Cause why not? Uh, let's rename this guy. Rename this one V2, because why not? All right, and let's do something with it. And for whatever reason, all I can think to do at the moment is just make it bigger. Like that, which is pretty cool. And now we gotta do the same thing to the rest of these. Just they have options, why not? All right. So now's when you hope that you paid attention and set up all your files the right size. Because we're, we're into it now, right? Right click. All right, new song. This one's driving me nuts. There we go. Uh, copy layer style. And paste that layer style. Okay, those two are pretty cool. I mean, even simple stuff like this, like they, he literally asked me for a background. 
probably one of these two is what he had in mind. Either this one or this one, I'm not sure, but it was probably one of those two. But why not? It only took me a few extra minutes to kind of go nuts with it. Oh, I thought Photoshop just crashed and I got real worried. Photoshop has not crashed on me in a long time. Way to say that, Derek, knock on wood, um, which is super cool. Also, side note, I forgot to show you guys these. Uh, I don't think I showed these to you yet. Check this out. <clears throat> so I got these in the mail from Sticker Mule, super cool. Hey, what's up, Aaron? Welcome back, I see you on YouTube. Uh, these buttons I just made on Sticker Mule for one of the brands I'm playing around with cool stuff to stick on your backpack or whatever, wherever buttons can be stuck. Super cool. Uh, let's keep going. <clears throat> Thanks, Aaron. Good to have you back. Um, all right, let's make the dark versions of this. So there's options because because we're this far in, you might as well. Yeah, but you're right. Shay, very, very repetitious. Did you say, do you care if I call you Shay? I don't remember. All right, copy, layer, style. Come back to this guy. I'm gonna paste this layer style. I feel like this stream is very, very repetitive. I apologize. I know it's your nickname, but like, is that, is that like only friends can call you that? Or like, that's what everybody calls you. Anyway. All right. <clears throat> Why is it? There we go. Okay. So close. So close. Let's rename this guy. What'd we call this? This was gray. I don't know why I cop I capitalized gray every single time. Oh, wrong name. Friends and family. Okay. Well, we can be friends. I followed you on on your Behance profile. So, perfect. All right, this one is the Nero logo watermark V2. All right, so you can see I could have made all of this with a much, much different approach, but I could have made this in PowerPoint and it would have taken me years. Um, Or was I saying, uh, it would take me years to, to design this in PowerPoint, like literally forever, my entire life would have been spent making this. Anyway, so that's why I jump into the software you know, right? So if you're really good at Illustrator, even though maybe you probably quote, should use Photoshop on something, jump into Illustrator first. Like jump into whatever helps you uh, be as creative as possible. What am I trying to do? Copy layer style, sorry. Whatever helps you be creative without being a roadblock, right? Don't let technology get in the way when you're first starting out. Uh, so if you're just trying to be creative and get some ideas down, maybe it's pencil and paper before you jump on a computer so you can write down your ideas. And in fact, I do that a lot. Um, I've got all kinds of notebooks. I've got pieces of paper around me. I've got my favorite pens always at the ready, pens and pencils. I keep this little nerdy pen and pencil pouch. So I know and I've got like my favorite pencils, my latest course, my logo design course on Skillshare. There's a link below, you guys can check it out. I talk about this when we talk about how to sketch up logos, how to draw logos and how to bring them into your work. Um, this is where I start a lot of times and I know these are my favorite, favorite, favorite pencils. And I've got my replacement lead here in the bag. I've got my favorite pens that I know are gassed up and ready, right? They've got the ink in them, they're not dried out. That song gets super annoying real fast too. Um, what else was I gonna show? Oh, I don't have it. Where did I, uh oh, I can't create anymore. I lost my favorite ruler. Anyway, so collectively, these are my four favorite pencils of all time. I've got a seven millimeter. 
I've got a 1.3 millimeter. So this one's a fatty, this little blue one for like, you know, headers and, and highlighting stuff. This one is just ridiculous. It's a drafting pencil. I don't even know. What is this like a, I don't know. It's thick. She's thick. <laughs> and then there's this one that's the 0.5. So I've got every lead size. Some are soft, some are hard. And between these four pencils, I have everything I need. It's always with me. And then if I'm feeling creative and I want to sketch something, I've got it. If I, if I want to take notes real quick and not forget what I'm doing, like especially now more than ever, you got your phone cutting in on you, with notifications, you've got uh, distractions, either you know, you're know you out of place at a coffee shop or at home and you've got family around or you're someplace where there's just a lot going on. In my world, I've got five kids. Uh, so um, anytime my kids are running around and they wanna come play with me or whatever, and I know I've gotta finish something, I might jot down my ideas before I get up from the computer so I know where I left off. Just so important. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't even remember how I got on this super long tangent. That's all right. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Shay. Uh, can I increase my volume? Um, I'm pretty much maxed out. Guys, how's it sounding? I've got the compressor on. It looks like my levels are good here. The music is turned down a little bit. Check one, two, chickity, chickity, check. Wiki, wiki. No, just no, <laughs> no, Derek. Okay. Um, I could do my late night FM DJ voice. Get up on the microphone. No. Okay. I'm just stalling now. Let's, let's get back to what we're doing. My wife is over in the corner making fun of me. No, not making fun of me. Okay. <laughs> you should be, you're missing out. <laughs> Are you even paying attention over there? Okay, she's not even paying attention. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. All right, <clears throat> so we got everything dialed in. All the names I think are good to go. I'm pretty happy with what I'm about to send as far as options are concerned. I could do some more with this. When we made the business cards, did you guys see those? Um, I have one sitting on my desk somewhere. My desk is kind of getting to be a mess. So these are the business cards for this brand. Um, I show them off a lot because I'm really proud of them. I think they turned out awesome. But I can do something like this as one of the backgrounds, right? Imagine it's horizontal. It's super, super, super busy. So I'd have to like do the same thing I'm doing now where everything's kind of muted and tone on tone uh, to make that work. But anyway, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. State alert drafting lead holder, Rob. I used to have, where is, oh, where is, I used to have one of those. And now I'm realizing it's not in my bag and it hasn't been for a while. Oh, well, I'll have to go pick up another one. All right, <clears throat> so, okay. So what I, what I, what I'm probably gonna do for tonight is just export these and just send them off to the client and say, yo, here's your stuff. And then I've done more than the bare minimum actually. Cause again, all they asked for was literally this version. And so I'm kind of going nuts with it. Uh, what I wanted to do if I had more time to stream, but I, I just don't tonight for this, but if I did, and maybe we'll make a part two, if you guys are interested, but, um, is actually jumping into PowerPoint and starting to flesh things out. So let's, let's go ahead and see how we'd bring over one of these images and then we'll put a bow on this stream for the night. Um, so let's jump over here to where are we even in? We were in Photoshop. You know what we could do. Let's have some fun with this. I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. I want to roll. We're going to clone this guy up. And we're going to clone this guy up. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing, Photoshop? Stop. Started zooming in. Crazy. I feel like this I feel like this one is going to be a great background color for a PowerPoint. It's going to be easy to read white text on it. All right. Now, now we're going to play a little bit. Let's call this one V3. Just kind of keeping our work clean as we go. Let's call this one also 
V3. Alright. <clears throat> now let's see. Let's 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 add some texture, some fun to this. So this texture brush I'm about to use, I bought forever ago from Creative Market from an artist. Gosh. Um Creative Market. Oh gosh. Uh, Retro Supply. I love his stuff. Um John a blank. Oh my gosh. Retro supply half tone brush brushes whatever obviously he has a ton a ton of incredible brushes here okay so just literally just pick one they're all amazing but that's where i got it that's where i got this brush that i'm about to use um also if you go back to that website i happen to make called derekmitchell.com let me go over here to reference uh resources we scroll down a little bit, boom, right here. Every week, Creative Market gives out free resources. So you can click on these and you could start saving your own little creative library of resources and assets. Got an icon set. What is this? Is this a font? Okay, got a really cool font. I don't know. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. What is this? Whales poster. I don't know. Sometimes there's some really cool stuff. Sometimes it's like, yeah, whatever. I'm not sure where I would use this, but if you save it, you'll have a whole huge library of amazing resources. So DerekMitchell.com, computer resources, scroll down and these update every week, these freebies on creative market. All right. <clears throat> so that halftone brush, let's make sure we're on the right layer. Hide my face so you can see what we're doing here. So I'm on, the, I'm on this layer right here and a few ways to work. What I'm going to do is add a new layer above it. Get my eyedropper tool. I'm going to sample this same color here. And then I'm going to change this layer. Let's just name it to grunge. I'm going to change this layer to multiply. Now, nothing's going to happen yet. <clears throat> There's nothing on this layer. It's an empty layer. Let's go to my brushes, hit the letter B. Let's jump down on these, uh, brushes here and things are getting a little slow there it is half tone supply subtle half tone okay all of these are great I don't really know which one I want but this one we're gonna try this one and see what happens all right so now as I click on this thing nothing happens why because my flow up here is set to five you're never gonna see that I was doing something else. So let's scrub this back up to 100%. So one thing to note, your brush can also have layer styles applied to it. So in the top here, I've got my brush selected. My mode up here is set to normal, but the layer that I'm about to paint to is set to multiply. I could have my layer set to normal and my brush could be set to something different like multiply. So every time I click on this, it multiplies itself and it gets darker and darker which is actually kind of a cool effect. And exactly what I was going for, I was just gonna come at it from a different angle, uh, meaning I was gonna set this to normal. <coughs> so watch, as I, as I, I can make this brush smaller. As I build on this and I keep clicking around, it should get darker and darker around the edges. I'm just gonna hold it down and scrub. See how it gets darker and darker and darker until it eventually probably hits black. That's because it's multiplying itself on top. So every time I paint down, it's a, it's a, it's another color getting darker and darker from the brush, not from the layer. The layer, like I said, is still set to normal. If I multiply the layer also, now it's gonna get even darker and it's gonna interact with the layer below, which is also kind of cool. And what I kind of was going for, this is a little bit extreme, but let's just, I don't know, let's just do stuff. We're gonna. So I don't like, I don't like what's happening, but we're going to just throw down a layer. Obviously this is way too much. We're going to back it off here in a minute. Also looking at the stream, it looks like my brush is totally taking over the whole screen. That's not what it looks like to me. What if I hit the caps? There you go. That's a little bit easier to see what it's doing. So right now I hit the caps lock on my keyboard. So with that turned on, 
caps lock somewhere there it's on right so instead of typing all capital letters it changes my brush to be a precise cursor so i can see uh why did it just say audio can you guys still hear me it just said audio muted i think we're back okay um <clears throat> oh with the caps lock on i can see the precise cursor oh i know why it's because my streaming software is making my brush like my cursor huge so you guys can see it all right this is way the heck overkill i did not mean to put this much on here but what we're going to do is is we're going to blend it back i could either hit the eraser and just erase away from this layer or i'm going to hit the layer mask button which is this little square down here with a circle in it we're going to add a mask to my grunge layer and then we're going to paint with that same brush on that same layer and we're going to hit x to paint with black black hides white reveal so now we're painting with black on the mask layer wow that went way too much too fast what's going on i don't know i'm taking longer on this than i would if it was just me knocking this out real quick but i want you guys to kind of understand the principles the principles i don't know the my approach right kind of my thought process is i do this um all right, that's not bad. That's that's cool. Um, let's, so now I've got this layer. I'm just gonna dial back the opacity a little bit. I just want this to be subtle. I just want it to be there, but not like overpowering. Definitely like a grunge vignette, Rob says over on Behance, 100%. Um, just, just something to add visual interest, honestly. Yeah, it's like a grunge vignette though, really, if we're being honest. Um, I could also get, I could apply it to this logo. So I can add a mask to this logo. Get my brush tool. And I just clicked one time. And what it did, if I turn this mask off, holding down shift and clicking on the mask, um, it just eroded away a little bit from that bowl. It's really, really, really subtle on the stream because I'm streaming, I think I'm streaming in 720 instead of 1080 tonight, because I was trying to make the stream a little more stable. So you're probably not even seeing a, a difference. Uh, I'm using a 4K monitor right now, so I, I mean, I can see it pretty clearly. But again, it's just, it's just a subtle, subtle detail that I'm just kind of playing around with, because why not? I'm gonna hit X. So now I'm painting with white because X flipped it. So that way my, whoops, wrong button. Uh, X flipped it. So instead of black being on top of my color swatches, now it's white. So now I'm painting back on this mask layer with white, hit the letter B to get my brush. So now as I click on here, turn back on my precise cursor by hitting caps lock so that we can see my what it's kind of doing. Now I'm bringing back in some of those details and oh and it's not working not a thing is happening and the reason why my brush mode is set to multiply so if it's white nothing is like if i'm painting with white or lighter colors nothing is gonna it's it's canceling itself out i gotta put my brush back up to normal there we go now as i click on things those details come back okay <clears throat> Zooming in, I mean, it's so subtle, you can't even tell, which maybe defeats the purpose. I love this kind of stuff though. I could spend hours, literally hours, just playing around. When, you're, when I'm brushing with things, like in Procreate or in Adobe Fresco, oh my gosh, it's so addicting just to kind of like, I gotta stop. I gotta be done. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> okay, but I have to, I gotta stop. I gotta be done soon. So let's get this thing Oh, we're so close. Okay. Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> how do you know when to quit? That's exactly my problem. Uh, there, that is, that is art 101. So Rob asks, how do you know when to quit? So you don't overwork a job. That is literally, you are experiencing that firsthand with me doing this. That, that is part of it is just over time you learn. Uh, sometimes you have to know when to walk away. Like I'm literally about to walk away from this cause I have to, cause I have to be done. Um, um, brush blend mode, multiply. So to answer your question, I don't really have an answer to your question. Uh, sometimes you got to set a timer. Sometimes you got to just kind of work on it a little bit and then decide to come back to it, uh, with fresh eyes. not liking this but but i know it's what i want to do like i want to play around with this all right so we just grunge the whole thing out now we're going to slide this opacity down so it's not as overbearing let's put this behind the logo so the logo stays pretty sharp and then let's grab let's make another layer above the logo and this time we're going to paint this lighter gray it might stand off better it's just okay maybe it's the brush there's a bunch of great brushes in here i think that one's just too yeah look at this so this one just see how white that line is it's just a really saturated brush with a lot of detail in the middle i want something like super subtle like super subtle this one looks promising. That's better. See how spaced out that pattern is? That's so much better. Okay. So something else now, after the fact, let's say I want to change how bright that is. Sure, I could scrub down the opacity. That's one way to do it. Probably the best way to do it in this case. Or what I can do, because not everything, not so there's each one of these little dots is like a pixel of color that's been filled on this layer, but some of it's transparent. So here's a really, really cool tip. If I come up here, I'm under the layers window, just under the blend mode, I've got lock and I have all these icons, all these things we can lock. Well, this first one, it looks like a checkerboard. If I click on that, it locks the transparency. So anything transparent cannot be touched on this layer. So now what I can do is I could pick any color I want. And as an extreme example, we'll just grab a bright blue or something. I'm gonna go to edit down to fill and we're gonna use the foreground color. And now when I click okay, it's gonna fill up the foreground, which is this bright blue, but it's, and it's on this layer that currently has the transparency locked. So it's only going to fill with blue anything that already has pixel data in there, okay? And it's only gonna fill it as much as is there. So if it's only 50% filled, it's only gonna fill it 50%. So it's gonna honor that alpha transparency. And I click okay, boom. And now I can change the color of everything on this layer without having to like redo what I just did. So a really, really cool technique. Let's unlock that. Let's scrub this down a little bit. The other issue I'm running into right now is I'm staring at like three super bright streaming lights. So I have a hard time seeing these subtle details with the glare on my screen. Oh well. All right, they're there, it's cool, it's super subtle. It maybe could be more subtle, but I gotta go. So here's how we're gonna wrap this up. What just happened? Undo, uh-oh. I just hit save and I got a beach ball. Hopefully we didn't kill it. <clears throat> All right. Well, Photoshop gets its life right. Oh no. Now my stream channel is not even switching. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think I just broke everything. That's my sign. It's time. All right, guys. Well, I think we're still here. I was about to shut it down. It's time. It's time. All right. <clears throat> so we got what we wanted here. I'm, I'm really happy with the results. And we got way more than enough um, 
I could I could play. I don't know. I really enjoy this brand for one. I love this logo. I love the colors, um, and I just love the style of like creating different options. I feel like when I first started, uh, when I would design something, I would feel like I could only do one file because this was before artboards in Photoshop. So I felt like I had to just get it right in the first file and I couldn't show different looks, even though there was different ways to do that even back in an older version of Photoshop called layer comps. We can get into that later, but for now, anyway, creating stuff with artboards is just such an easy way to explore without committing to anything. All right, but we wanna export all of these. So I'm gonna go to file export artboards to files all right let's browse where we want to stash this thing let's stick this under oh it put it right where it needed to be let's just double check this presentation templates let's make a new folder called exports throw it in there all right and let's call it t3b presentation background all right that'll work we'll make it a jpeg we'll crank this up so it's high quality because it doesn't have to be small for web design uh, good question, Shay. What time will I be back tomorrow? What time? What is tomorrow? What's today? Today's Monday. That's what happens when you work every day. They all blend together. I'm pulling up my calendar right now. So tomorrow. Today's Monday. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Um... Tomorrow's probably another late night one about this time. Because the rest of my day, it's either that or it's going to be early, not early in the morning, but probably like 10 a.m. I'm on Mountain sta Mountain Standard, Mountain Daylight Time, MDT or MST. I don't remember where we're at. Standard Daylight, Daylight Savings. I don't know. I'm on one of them. I'm in Mountain Time. Uh, in India, it's Tuesday. I love it. That's awesome. You're coming to me from the future. That's the coolest thing ever. Um, <laughs> so right now it's 9.30 p.m. in the evening. Uh, so tomorrow, tomorrow morning at like 10-ish a.m. or probably like 7-ish, but then I run into bedtime with the kids. I don't know. I need a streaming schedule. I don't have one. And part of the reason I don't have one is because every day is so different. And I just try and jump on as soon as I can. So, all right. Uh, back to exporting these files. We got the name. We are going to do artboard content only. And we're not going to check selected artboards. We want to do everything. All of them. Uh, yeah, run it, do it, do the things. <clears throat> so it's going through and pulling out every artboard and creating a file from it. Boom. All right. Sorry, that's gross. I wasn't thinking and I I love chewing on ice, but I forgot I was live. So that would have been annoying in the microphone. Okay, uh, let's see. Jumping over to our files. Let's go over to the presentations folder to the templates we just made, the exports and look at, oh, I panicked for a second. I was like, nothing, nothing is there. Look at all these beautiful, files with the names correctly added. So cool. So here's what we did. Let's maybe move this or just turn my face off. Nope, wrong button. 
There we go. Cool. There's that texture. That's too much. Seeing it full screen now, that's too much. Oh, well. It is what it is. Maybe I'll delete it and I won't send it to them so they don't accidentally use it because I don't like it. It's too much. Uh, that one's subtle enough that I don't mind it. Oops. Oh, I forgot we had these ones too. Boom. Love it. All right. So the only one that I didn't like was V3 of the Dark Nero. That's just too much. We're going to delete it. Command delete just to delete it. Yep. Burn it. Nuke it right off the server. Gone. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to right click and I'm going to compress exports. All right. So, wow, really? So all these files together are three megs. Wow. Those are tiny. Not bad. All right. All right. So now I got to do when I jump off the stream is, uh, take that file throw it into an email and we're done boom awesome all right guys hey thanks for hanging out with me i'm gonna bounce pretty fast tonight because i gotta go but don't forget to uh follow like subscribe tap the bell all the things you can do on this video love it i love it when you guys uh stick around i love it when you're in the chat um <laughs> yeah Rob said that that last one looked like a whacked JPEG compression on the screen, but he loves the process. Yeah, I agree. Like it's so much fun, but seeing it big after I exported it, I could tell it was way, way, way overdone. So thanks Shay. Thanks Rob for hanging out in the chat. Lots of awesome L L M Tatum from India. Thanks for tuning in from the future. Uh, <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. All right, guys, I'm out of here. You're awesome. Have an awesome night or an awesome day, wherever you're watching from. And we will see you in the next stream. All right, guys. Thanks for watching today. I uh, hope you learned a lot of valuable information. And I appreciate you sticking around to the very end. But before you go, just a couple things I want to remind you. The first is, if you haven't already, feel free to like this video if you can. Depending on where you're watching from, give it a thumbs up or subscribe or tap the bell or give it a follow if you can. And uh, also, maybe even just copy the link up in the browser and share it with a friend or post it to your Facebook page. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, but again, just want to say thanks for uh, sticking around and I'd love to continue going live as much as possible and helping you guys out. So the best way that I can help you is by you commenting on the videos below. I read those comments. I engage with them as soon as I can, if I can, when I see them. So if it's live, I'll try and answer you right away. If this is a replay, you can still comment on the video and uh, I go back and I read those. So I just wanted to say thanks again for watching and let me know what you're working on. I'd love to help you out and hopefully we will see you in the next live. And to be sure you don't miss it, like, like this video and subscribe and follow and do the things. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.